Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Hannah Wallace and today I'm joined by Abhishek Shukla from Thomson Reuters and we're going to be talking about compliance learning. Abhishek, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you. It's great to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Each year we've seen a building a culture of compliance maintain the spot at the top of risk and compliance officers' agendas. Why is this so important and what are organisations doing to promote this within their business? I think that's a great question, Hannah. Um, culture of compliance is top of mind of most of our clients. Obviously, this is forcing them to look at holistic compliance training approaches, including blended learning, social media, on-the-job aids. Obviously, e-learning forms a core tool within this portfolio of different options. And within e-learning, we are seeing this manifesting itself in terms of need for more relevant content. So our clients are coming to us and saying, hey, this content cannot be generic content. It has to be specific to the needs of the learner group, which means it has to be focused on the regions, industry, the specific job function. We are also getting lots and lots of requests for making these courses more engaging to drive that behavior gone are the days of click, click, click. People are looking for interactive exercises and more engaging modes to make these courses um, engaging. I see, and with a growing influx of regulations, organizations are certainly challenged to comply with these growing compliance demands without overloading their users. How do organizations deal with this challenge? I absolutely agree with that. Uh, this is probably one of the key themes that emerges in pretty much every conversation I have with my clients. Uh, and, and I think there are two dimensions to this problem. One is how do I make sure I have the right courses um, when a new regulation comes in? And essentially there are multiple options to deal with that. One, you can have your own in-house teams create a course or you can leverage partners such as ourselves who are continuously adding market-ready courses to our library. But the larger uh, dimension to this question that you asked is around how do I ensure that there's no training fatigue? There's only so much time or so many courses that I can roll out in a year. Um, and, and so your courses not only have to be relevant and the right courses, but we are also seeing a demand for making more engaging and punchier courses. So a few years back, we used to have courses which were like 60 minute average duration. Now that has come down to 45 minutes. And in fact, we are seeing also demand to reduce this to 30 minutes. And some organizations want to supplement that with um, even shorter duration courses, which we call micro learnings. So, so those can be sent as additional add-ons uh, throughout the year. And it serves a dual purpose of increasing retention as well. So you might take a base course in January, but then uh, either as an event that happened, um, as an example, the Pan Panama paper leak happened, and that could be a great opportunity to send a refresher, short bite-sized video or a course around data security, money laundering, or corruption. So I, I, I think gradually we will see more and more adoption of these short uh, refresher courses and that's certainly something we are looking into and I'm sure other vendors are looking into as well. And finally, are there new technologies that organizations and compliance teams are incorporating into their compliance programs? Definitely. I think this space is evolving um, almost on a daily basis, right? So going back to the question about one of the key tasks that compliance officers have is how do we make this more engaging and also how do we drive behavioral change. And towards that, we are seeing a lot of demand for analytics. So previously, people were happy with looking at, hey, everyone has taken this course, but now they want to see what has been the change in their behavior, where are the gaps in understanding within my organization, which probably uh, is a scope for more training. So, so that's one area where we are seeing a lot of interest and demand. The other, of course, is mobile learning, right? With, with the adoption of mobile across the globe, we are seeing more and more customers asking for courses that run seamlessly on desktop as well as mobile. Um, obviously, the adoption varies across regions, but this is a trend which I would say would be very prevalent across all regions very soon. And finally, we are also seeing a lot of requests for rich media content video as an example, uh, very appealing for the generation which is used to YouTube. Um, and it also lends itself very well to the micro learning concept that we were talking about, the short uh, five to six minute learning mode, 
and then th these videos come in very handy for that. So I, I would say these are the top three trends that we are seeing within, within the industry and every uh, vendor who's in this space is doing something or the other to address these needs. Abhishek, thank you very much. This has been great. Thank you so much for your time as well. And thank you for watching.